12 through 30, John chapter 8, verses 12 through 30. The title of the message is, Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. And we're going to read and cover verses 12 through 30, and then I'm going to pick out and highlight verse 12 and some other verses. But I'm going to start reading here in verse 12 from the New King James Version. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said to him, You bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, Even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true, for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you do not know where I came from and where I am going. You judge according to the flesh, I judge no one. And yet if I do judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. Verse 17. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true, and I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. Then they said to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. These words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. Then Jesus said to them again, I am going away, and you will seek me, and will die in your sins. Where I go, you cannot come. And the Jews said, Will he kill himself because he says, Where I go, you cannot come? And he said to them, You are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Then they said to him, Who are you? And Jesus said to them, Just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. And they did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. And then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man... Then you will know that I am he, and that I am doing of myself. But as my Father taught me, I speak these things. And he who sent me is with me, and the Father has not left me alone, for I do those things that please him. Verse 30, and he spoke these words, and many believed in him. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your words, Lord. They're eternal. We want to live by them, know them. Lord, we want to eat the word. We want to, Lord, be healed by the word. We want to be empowered by the word. And we thank you, Lord, for your people are here. And that, Lord, this is manna from heaven. We claim it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, there was a grandfather, and he was walking with his grandson. And uh, he said, uh, son, do you know where you're going? He said, he said, no. He said, are you afraid? He said, well, Grandpa, I'm not afraid because you know where you're going. Amen. So he wasn't afraid because he had Grandpa there. So Grandpa kind of got a chuckle out of it. Is that, of course, he doesn't know where he's going, but Grandpa's leading the way. And, uh, and when you got a good, strong Grandpa and a good, strong Dad, you don't have to be afraid. Amen. Dad knows best. Amen. And, uh, but our Father, our Heavenly Father, He knows what's best. Jesus said, if you stay close to me, if you hang on to me and my words, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will always have a plan and you will always have a way out to escape to victory because I am the light of the world. And Jesus is saying that to us. 
And so in John, you know, 8.12 is our main verse, and Jesus spoke on the Feast of Tabernacles. And that's why I gave you a, a Bible study that I put together there. And it's just exciting. And we're going to go through, um, I'm going to preach the sermon. We're going to get to that later. But today, it's just neat to highlight. It's just the timing of God that, you know, that God has put this together. I'm just pre preaching chapter by chapter, verse by verse, but I end up being here right at the very day, the 16th of October, Israel is celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. Today is the final day in Israel. And it was really beautiful. On CBN, it showed that 70 nations came all over the world, all different colors of people coming and worshiping, Christians worshiping the Lord and the Feast of Tabernacles. And they came as a witness to the Jewish people and the Jewish people that are not yet born again. They saw their light. They saw their love. They saw that they came from all these different countries. And they said, wow, not a lot of people like us, but you like us and you love us. And they said, yes, and it's all about Jesus. And so, amen, Jesus is the fulfillment. And of course, the, the Jewish people that are not yet born again, they're carrying out the feasts and the tradition. And that's what Jesus came on this exact day. He came on the, the final day, we believe, of the feast. And he declared, I am the light of the world. Okay, now what they would do, because in Herod's temple, when, when, during Jesus' time, they had perfected the temple. Everything was whitewashed, polished, marbled, clean, covered in gold. And, um, and they would build a 75-foot, basically, menorah in the temple. And then they would have young men go up on a series of ladders, and they would pour oil in there, pure oil, and they would light that light. Each It was a seven-day feast, the Feast of Tabernacles. And so you can imagine, you know, now we kind of, you know, how many of you enjoyed, uh, you know, hearing about the Padres win? You know, hey, it was pretty exciting. But they were playing till 11 o'clock at night. And so that you have to have lights out there blazing for them to see that ball flying, you know, way up in the air, right? But here, they didn't have anything like that. No LED lights, no. They had, this was a huge event. You can imagine it lit up the Temple Mount, and you could see it for miles away. And, um, but Jesus uh, wants them to know that he's the light of the world, and he's the one that delivered the children of Israel out of bondage because that's what they're celebrating in Feast of Tabernacles is how God provided for them in the wilderness those 40 years that God was their provider, that God was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day, and God helped them. In fact, it was, it was literally when Pharaoh was coming after the children of Israel after they got, you know, they got freed from slavery, they were actually at a place called Sukkot, or Sukkot was there before the, the sea parted. And so that's the name of it. And guess what? Pharaoh came on them with all of his 600 chariots or however many. And guess what? God put, put up his pillars of fire. He put up his pillars of fire by night and the cloud by day. And they couldn't, they couldn't get these children of Israel that were trapped by the Red Sea. But God waited until the morning. And then God said, hey, to Moses, hey, stop talking. Put your rod out. <laughs> put it over the water. And the sea opened up, and God delivered them. And so God also is going to deliver us in every generation that puts their trust in him. And so, amen, we're excited. We're excited about the electricity that flows through us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And um, they say now that um, actually uh, umbrellas attract electricity, and uh, but guess what? You know what? When you need an umbrella, you need an umbrella. Don't worry about it. Amen. <laughs> when it's your time, it's your time. But uh, what a powerful event. And so it's the darkness is, is contrasted with the light. And if you could have seen the Temple Mount it, with, of course, Google Earth didn't exist then. Right. But you can go through Google Earth and you can see all the developed countries. You can see the United States of America and you can see all Los Angeles and San Diego all lit up, 
our nation is lit up all over. But, and then in, in underdeveloped countries, you don't see that. You see a lot of darkness. Like in North Korea, there's just very little light, only in the capital city. But can you imagine if Google Earth existed at that time, seeing the 75-foot menorah up there blazing? You would have seen it from heaven, see, because everything else was dark around. But Jesus stood up and said, I am the light of the world. Okay, now he's not saying that I'm the light of this event, or I'm not just the light of Israel, or I'm not just the light that makes you happy, but I am the light of the world. <laughs> without me, everything is darkness. Without, without Christ, everything is dark. So we look at, um, in remembrance of, of Jesus, and they're angry, all right, because he says, I am who I am. Now, who spoke that but to Moses, right? When Moses was hanging out, right, and he's, he's out there with the flocks of Midian out there at the Sinai, and he sees this burning bush, right? It's blazing, and it doesn't, it doesn't go away. It's just continually, it, the heat is there, and he has to get up, and he gets closer, and God says, take off your sandals. You're standing on holy ground. And then he says to Moses, he says, in, 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 this is in Exodus 3, he says, I'm going to use you to deliver the children of Israel. And, and he's going to say, well, how, who do I say sent me? And he said, I am who I am. All right. So now Jesus is telling the Jews at this high feast, the most fabulous day, you know, it's the end of the three major feasts. And they're full of joy. Remember what happened last week? He came up early, right? And then they presented this woman who was caught in adultery. And, and Jesus, amen, showed forgiveness and mercy to her. All right? And now it's later on in the day. And he's saying, I'm going to show goodness and mercy to you and to all humanity. I am who I am. And so Moses got that word. Now, Guess what? God can identify himself how he wants to identify himself, right? What he is saying is that he is Yahweh. He is Yahweh, Elohim, creative God. I've come in humility. I've come because I care. I've come because I love you. I want you to, you should see me through the traditions, but so many are not seeing him, even through the traditions. It's just like many Americans. We've been so blessed with the gospel. We have so many Bibles of so many different versions. We've been through so much. But there's so many that don't know the Lord. They're, or they're cultural Christians. And they just take a little bit of Christ. But everyone should be saved. Every child should be instructed in the Word of God in America. But it's because of the darkness. It's because of the rebellion. It's because people have neglected to carry the torch. But God, amen, is pleased when you carry the torch. God is pleased when you appreciate the light and live in the light that is clearly seen. But, of course, it's internal. It's in our hearts. It's what we carry in our hearts. So this is the metaphor that Jesus would use. I am, and, uh, and we are standing on holy ground. But can you imagine that Jesus, the living God, is here among them in humility. And in the chapter 8, they come against him and interrupt him 10 times in chapter 8. Just rude. The, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, interruption because they don't want to hear and uh, do you know anybody like that that just doesn't want to hear? <laughs> I know you do, and, and we all do. But that's why God has so lit our hearts that we have patience with people. We have patience with their stubbornness. We have patience with their inconsistencies because God has been patient with us. Keep the flame burning and keep your first love in Christ because he is coming, all right? He's coming just at the right time. All right, so here's some ways that we can define light, all right, is that light reveals and light enables us to see things. Light reveals. That's how we can, with pixels, we can see the colors. 
You know, the other day there was a leak under the men's uh, bathroom sink. And so uh, Pastor Kurt had to put on his plumbing cap and uh, put on the, the, you know, the acetylene torch and uh, go down there. But guess what? It was so dark and I was in this situation. I pulled out my cell phone, right? Thank the Lord for your, the flashlight on your cell phone. Don't they come in handy at times when you're fumbling around for keys and you just put on that app and there's a cell phone and it's a flashlight, right? But see, we need the light. I needed the light to make that solder and to check and see that the leak was solved, and it was. But we, we need the light. Now, C.S. Lewis said this. He said, I believe in Christ like I believe in the sun. I believe in Christ like I believe in the sun. You know, that's 93 million miles away. But he defines it further. Not only because I see it, but because all things are seen. See, is that without the sun, there is no light. Without the sun, there is no growth. Without the sun, you know, we would just fade away, right? Is that, but sometimes we take that big ball for granted and, uh, and we... Uh, do you know that there is, uh, well, I'm going to just quote from Ephesians. It says this, 513, but when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible for whatever makes manifest is light. So it's through the light that we have life and well-being and energy and vitamin D, right? Because of the light. Now, there is actually a, a condition, a physical condition it's called SAD. It doesn't sound good, does it? It's SAD stands for Seasonal Affective Disorder. Seasonal Affective Disorder. And it's a psychological disorder that a, a number of people are affected when the sun goes away. When, the sun, when winter comes, there's less sun, and then they come into this SAD condition, and they have to be treated. All right? And so they found out through this study that only 1% of Floridians have the sad condition, all right? And, of course, we're in that place, too. How many of you here love the sunshine? Yay, it's so encouraging. Amen. It's coming out later today, you know? But uh, So we're there with the Floridians, but 10% of Alaskans struggle with it, right? Because they get all depressed, and, and so what they do in their psychological treatments is they have to put them in and turn on some halogen lights, right? And turn on some lights for them that they can feel the warmth and then they, they get encouraged and they, they come out of some of their depression. Um, and, and unfortunately, sometimes they put them on psych meds. But we don't need that. We've got the son of righteousness, right? And he's blazing and there's healing in his wings, right? So we're getting the sunshine right now through the word of God. And so we, we sometimes, though, have, um, you know, it's not, it's not seasonal effect, um, affective disorder. It's seasonal sin disorder, okay? <laughs> so sometimes we have a sinful nature. We all have a sinful nature. And so that sinful nature, if we don't get sunlight on it, it can fester. If we don't get to church on time, right, we can end up backsliding. Because the thing is, is the world is cold and it's full of disease, right? And there's diseases all around, but Jesus is the sunlight. And so through the word and through prayer and through church attendance, we are able to dispel all that and we get the sunshine of God and we get, we get healing. So it says in Ecclesiastes 11.7, it says, Light is sweet and it is pleasant to the eyes to see the sun. Amen. Don't look too much at the sun, but you can feel the sun. You can glaze at it. Don't look too long, right? Or you won't be seeing anymore because <laughs> the sun's so bright, the sun's so strong. Amen. So, light scatters darkness. Always light scatters darkness. It's, it's uh, in fact, it's actually um, in Genesis 1, 3, and 4, in Genesis 1, 3, and 4, it says, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. That was the first thing that God created, was the light. But there's also the darkness. And see, you and I, we have got to decide, right, 
that we are children of the light. And that darkness comes in, but we have to dispel it. We shouldn't be shocked that we get dark thoughts. We shouldn't be shocked that there's darkness in government and and governments of man. I mean, it's disappointing, right? But, But we shouldn't be shocked to the point of depression or anxiety. We need to pray. And we need to look at the prophecy. And we need to look at the Great Commission. And and wherever sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. So we get all stirred up in the right way. All right, so light gives warmth. Light gives warmth. Do you know that an Eskimo who builds builds an igloo, they say one candle, one candle in an igloo, and if it's reflected right, can change below temperatures, right, to about 45 degrees. So a candle, everybody say one candle. One candle can keep a person alive in an igloo, right? But God says that I, I, this word actually brings warmth, warmth from the word. In fact, it says in Psalms 40, 43, 3, send out your light and your truth and they will lead me. So it brings leadership. And uh, aren't you glad about LED lights now? All right, because there was a time, and I fought it, and, and my, my, my dad, he's in heaven now, where there's all light up there, right? <laughs> Amen. But he, he was always a good shopper, so he bought a bunch of, you know, uh, light bulbs before they, they phased out. So he got a whole stack of them, right? And so when he went on to heaven, he left me with a bunch of light bulbs too, you know. So I'm using those light bulbs, but the, the fact is, is those old... Uh, those old Edison light bulbs cost a lot more money to operate. And they also, they, they end up, you know, they end up blowing out. And, uh, but guess what? The LED lights, see, these are all LED lights in here. And, and the city once had a program, and, and we, got, we got in on it. They said, we want to change out all your light bulbs. We said, have at it, hallelujah. The board said, yes, come on in. And uh, so before this, guess what? Right, Jeff? We were always up on a ladder changing out light bulbs all the time. So I have to say thank you for LED light bulbs. I haven't had to be up on a ladder, and Jeff hasn't been, had been called for many, many years now. <laughs> Amen. But see, the thing is, is the most uh, you know, intense, the most technological, the most anointed light is the light that comes from the Word of God and that you're a brand new creation in Christ Jesus, and it burns from within. It burns from within. All right, so now we have, we have some visitors. Praise the Lord. Amen. Nigeli, hi. Praise God. Amen. Mateo and Gabriel is here. Amen. They'll, they've got, amen, they're going to. All right, so listen to what Moses All right, we're back to, everybody say back to Moses. All right, we're back to Moses. This is the Feast of Tabernacles. They're remembering the light, right, and the deliverance from Egypt. But in in Exodus 10, 21 and 23, God brought a darkness on on Egypt. Now, you got to check this out. It is a darkness that was so heavy, and I'm going to read it. It says, then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand towards heaven. And that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness to be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand towards heaven, and there was a pitch darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. But all the people of Israel had light where they lived. Now, you've got to see this, that there's something beyond even condescent light. There's something beyond this. It was a darkness that was so thick and so depressive that they literally, after three days, Pharaoh saying, yeah, let the people go. It's because it was a touch of hell. Because in hell is utter darkness. In hell, it's so dark you can't see, right? Oh, you just feel torment. They were feeling some of the torment of hell. And they said, let the people go. Let the people go. And so they, and then after that, Pharaoh hardened his heart again. But isn't it interesting that the children of Israel had light? Even though there was this gross darkness, they had light, they had oil. 
And, and guess what? In dark times, we always have light. Praise the Lord. Do you know that there is a light bulb in Livermore, California? And it's a, it's the, it's a condescent, incandescent light bulb. Now listen to this. It has been burning for 121 years. It's a phenomena in California. It's the longest burning light bulb in the history of the world. In fact, people come from all around, uh, you know, interesting people, to Livermore, California, to see this light bulb that, you know, it's a phenomena. It just keeps going. And um, I don't know if there's going to be prophetic implications when it goes out. I don't know. But the, the reality is, is it's a phenomena that it keeps going. And guess what? It's not a phenomena that you can keep going. It's the promise of God that you can keep going and you can overcome and you have light in your household even though there's darkness all around. Amen. Arise and shine, the light has come. All right, so with this, um, as we're going to uh, transition here, there's all this um, persecution that's come against Jesus. And I'm just going to kind of, is that it shouldn't be right? There was a man, a cripple, that was healed at Bethesda. A cripple, healed, 38 years or however, and he's, he's walking. He's praising God. They should know by the witnesses. The witnesses are John the Baptist testified about Jesus. His miracles testified about him. But see, the scribes and the Pharisees, they are, had already heard this dialogue in chapter 5. And so now they want him to teach again. Show us your witness. Well, he says, my witness is myself. Is that you don't believe me, but I've come, and I'm Yahweh, but you don't believe me. And so you come from the darkness. I come from the Father. I want you to come into the light. But you can see this opposition. And um, there was an old uh, story of a nomad in the desert, all right? And so it was night, and he was hungry, all right? So he was in his tent, and he lit a candle, and he was going he, he to eat some dates in his tent. So he bit into one date and he, he, on one side, and he saw there was a worm in the date. And so he threw it out of the tent. And then he took the next date, and he bit into it, and he saw another worm, and he threw it out of the tent. And so the man said, you know what? I want to eat those dates. So he blew out the candle, and he ate all of his dates. <laughs> they were rotten, rotten. He's eating worms that could damage his body. But see, that's why people, right, that don't want the light, they just want to eat stuff. And they don't care. They just want to eat it, even though it's rotten, even though it's going to tear up their gut, even though it's going to tear up their life. I just put the light out, and I'm going to eat it anyways, right? And it's like, no, no, the children of God, we want to know what we're eating, amen? We want to pray over it. Glory to God. And, uh, and that's why sometimes people stay away from church. They stay away from church because they don't want the light to shine. They don't want to be exposed to some of the things that they're doing, so they stay away. And that's why we need to say, come on, amen, love the light, come in. And especially when we see the evil day approaching. And so we have to see that they're coming against Jesus they want to kill Jesus, but I want, I want us to jump to verse 20. John chapter 8, verse 20, it says, These words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. And guess what? You be bold, and you be strong, and you shine the light of Christ, I got to pray with a couple of my neighbors this week. We got great neighbors through the years, and one, you know, needs a knee replacement. I got to pray with him. He, he's getting closer to the Lord. Another one had a medical condition. We need to pray. We need to shine the light. We say, well, why, when are they going to come into the kingdom? You don't know. I don't know. But keep shining the light, right? Is that, is that God's, God's people are out here, and people are in darkness. And, and I just want to... Um, bring this part to a conclusion here because I want to get into the Feast of Tabernacles. But I want you to remind you 
that one day in Revelations 21, when there's a new heaven and a new earth, guess who's going to be the sun? Guess who's going to be the star? Guess who's going to be the light? It's Jesus, right? It's that there is no more darkness in the new heavens and the new earth. And um, let's just, uh, I'm going to read from Revelations 21, 23, and 24. And it says, And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light. And its lamp is, is the Lamb. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Revelations 22.5 says, And night will be no more, and they will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Amen. See how Jesus is the light. Of course, we have the sun, and we can you know, study it and everything else, but God made the sun, and that he is the, the light. You know, the other day I had the privilege on Cow's Mountain of praying with this Russian man who had fled the war in, in Russia. And I said to him, and his name was Alex, and he's about 30 years old, and, and he, he's brave. He, he fled the war. He's a smart man. <laughs> Get out of there, right? But I said, uh, Alex, wh where's your accent from? He says, I'm Russian. I said, do you need prayer for anything? He said, no, I don't need prayer for anything. And then I said, do you like Putin? He says, no, I don't like Putin. Do you think that we should pray then for the Ukraine? And he said, yes, yes, he said, we should pray. And so we prayed together, and the Holy Spirit came down and touched him. But isn't that touching? Here he is, right? He's got bad government, and he has to go and, and fight. And a lot of these guys can't get out of the country. And, of course, our hearts go out to the Ukrainians who are also, they're the ones, the victims of this, but also those that are under, you know, wrong leadership, right, are under that oppression. So we need to shine the light and love our enemies to the light and, um, and keep growing in the light. So here's the conclusion. Keep growing, keep glowing, and keep going, right? Amen. Keep going and, and glowing and growing and going. <laughs> Amen. Because I'll tell you what, there's glow worms, little worms, and you can't even see how they, they, they you, you can't even see that they really move, but at night you can see their movement, right? And the creatures of the sea, who put that, you know, who put that light within them, right? In the deep, the deep sea. How about how about fireflies, huh? Who put that? Come on, a light in a fly. And they're fun to watch. Who did that, right? Who, who put that electricity in an eel, right? Just a little eel, right? It's like, wow, God. God is so awesome. He's full of light, and he even puts it in his creatures. And amen. And so we've got to keep uh, growing, glowing for Jesus. So the light that's in you, don't put a bushel over it, right? Sometimes they say, oh, you shouldn't share with that person because they might think that you're proud. You know, you shouldn't go up and ask that person if they need prayer because they could judge you. But you know something? The Bible says, let your light shine. And, and if you get rejected, who are they rejecting? If, you, if you've come in peace, right, who are they rejecting? They're rejecting Jesus. But Satan wants us to feel as if maybe they're rejecting us. You know, if, if we've come in love and then we're rejected, then they're rejecting Jesus. And, of course, we'll keep praying for them. But we have to stay plugged in. How many of you here have thought that you plugged in your cell phone at night and you woke up and there was zero power? Huh? Come on now. Of course, it all happened to all of us. It's because the other end wasn't plugged in. You thought you plugged it in, right? And then you wake up like, hey, what's going on? Oh, I got to get a new cell phone. No, you just didn't plug it into the source, right? So it's like sometimes people are saying, I'm losing my light. I'm losing my light. I'm going into darkness. Are you reading the Bible in the morning? Are you up in prayer? Are you getting generated? Have you missed church? You know, I mean, it's like get the plugged in, right? And all of a sudden the light comes and, and we shine and then we get the perspective and we get charged up and we're, and we're not going to grow dim. And, and look at after all of this, We'll look at uh, John 8, 8.30.
And it says, and he spoke these words, and many believed in him. Okay? So here's the balance. Many rejected him, but many believed in him. And that's why for you and I, we found that I've been saved 44 years, right? You keep believing, you keep going, you keep growing, you keep glowing, and some believe and, and some thrive, and others, you know, by their own will and volition, choose to drop off. But you just keep growing and glowing and going because one day the king is coming. And that's why uh, we have like just about like three minutes, all right? But let's just look at your notes there, your notes of the Feast of Tabernacles or, or Sukkot. Now, I want you to just look at that, that today there's three feasts that, that they had to attend. And if you lived 18 miles around Jerusalem, you had to attend it every year. So whenever there was Passover, whenever, whenever there was Pentecost, or whenever there was the Feast of Tabernacles, you had to go. Now, if you were a Jewish person and you lived 100 miles away, well, you would have to at least observe that and come at least a couple of times in your lifetime. But if you lived about 18 miles around the circumference of Jerusalem, you were obligated by the law to make every one of these feasts. So what we see is, is Passover, right, was fulfilled, right? Jesus was the Passover lamb. He died on the cross. He rose on the third day. He, Passover is fulfilled. Right? Pentecost has been fulfilled, right? Because after that, right, the infilling of the Holy Spirit on the church, they spoke in tongues, and then they were empowered to preach the gospel all around the world, right? And so now it's on the Internet. Guess what? You know, right now, uh, Elon Musk, we're praying for his salvation, but guess what? Starlink now is providing these, these uh, receivers just like they did for the Ukraine. That's what's kept the Ukrainians alive is that they've been able to have Internet and, they, and they've been able to hold the Russians accountable. But it's because Elon Musk and his Starlink you know, satellites that are up there. And now they're getting them into Iran. They're getting them into Iran, so they're smuggling them in. So now all the Iranian people are able to film what the mullahs are doing and the corruption, and it's getting more and more. They're going to overthrow that government in time, but it's because there's light. And so, see, now we have Pentecost, the power of Pentecost, but the third one that hasn't been fulfilled yet is the Feast of Tabernacles. And by the way, with each feast, there's trumpets, all right? With each feast in Israel, there's trumpets. And uh, so it is one that is yet to be fulfilled. And, um, and so there's just a lot of neat parallels with the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, the tabernacle begins like it did this time on, on the 11th. But guess what? It began with a full moon. So there was a full moon that happened on the Feast of Tabernacles. It started on the 9th, but it was full on the 11th. And then, they, and then today is the end. Actually, the 16th is the end. But the moon is a reflection of the church. It's a reflection of the bride. And so it's just a beautiful thing. And um, it's seven days is, is what the, it's like for the, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. And um, I just want to speed along here that um, seven, seven days, and guess what? And I, I got to conclude with this, that the tabernacles... Is, is a beautiful picture of the rapture. There's a lot of parallels in here. We don't know the day and the hour, but we know that things are heating up and things are looking more and more like the Lord could come back. And by the way, when Jesus ascended in Acts 1, 10, he left on a non-feast day. I want you to get this. He left on a non-feast day. He left on an ordinary day. And he said in Acts 1, 10 and 11, I'm coming back on an ordinary day, in other words. So I'm coming as a thief, right, is a theme. So we can't just, we can't say he's coming on this, you know, feast day and when it's a full moon and no, we don't know. But everything is looking very, very good that the Lord could come. And, and guess what? Last, seven years ago, Seven years ago, in, when it was the Feast of Tabernacles, seven years ago, there was a huge blood moon. 
as big as it can get. It was a harvest moon. And, and of course, I've kept our church all in form. But seven years ago, Feast of Tabernacles, when it began, was a blood moon, a huge blood moon. It was also an eclipse, and it was seen all over the world, all over North America, all over Africa. And, uh, and it says that before the coming of the Lord, the moon's going to turn to blood. Now it's seven years later, and, um, and Israel just uh, gave away some land, some sea, some maritime territory there, which is not good. Benjamin Netanyahu is not happy with that. But they gave up these waters that have natural gas, and they, and they gave it and made a contract with, with Hezbollah, right? They're enemies. And so it, it doesn't look like a good decision. But you know what? God loves Israel. God loves you and I. Keep the lamp burning. Plug in your cell phone at night. Amen. And, and use that light when you need it. Amen. When you're in a, in a dark place, turn on that cell phone light. Glory to God. But God wants us to know he is the light of the world. He's given you all the light that you and I need to keep a good testimony, to stay healthy and to stay ready and to stay alert and, um, and not eat, you know, dates with worms in it, you know? Amen. So why don't we all stand up together? And I know everybody...